Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris from Tugger.ca back with another review video. Well, it's a little different today. We're going to do a bit of a comparison video between three printers that we use at my studio. Now we do a lot of printing on site, uh, different types of uh, activations for our clients. Uh, so I wanted to kind of just talk about the pros and cons between uh, the three printers that I have in front of me. Now I've done a ton of research on printers over the last uh, 10 years. And the thing is, I don't want to do just reviews on new and upcoming products, but also products that I've been using for a few years. And uh, that way we can look at the benefits uh, of each one and you have sort of true experience uh, coming out to tell you uh, ab about the products and uh, the longevity of each one as well. So without further ado, let's present the models first. We have the DNP DS620A. We have the Sinfonia CS2 printer and the newer Primera Impressa IP60 printer. Difference between the three, well, we got die sub, die sub, and thermal inkjet. These two are the main ones that we use uh, at my studio. I was very interested in having a first hand look at the uh, uh, Impressa IP60 here. Um, because it's thermal inkjet. It, is, it isn't a, a type of printer that we used uh, at our studio. So I was very curious to see what the quality was. Um, and it had a very impressive uh, print speed uh, advertised at, uh, at about seven seconds per print, um, which is a huge advantage. So I really wanted to check it out. Uh, in terms of my personal uh, favorite, it really depends on what type of uh, uh, work it's for. The Sinfonia CS2 really is designed and made for uh, photo booth units. So this is what we use with our uh, photo booth division. And then with the DNP DS620, which is really my personal workhorse, I really love it for portrait stations. The quality is uh, excellent. And uh, I've never had a, a jamming issue with the paper. It's always run smoothly. It's pretty easy to change uh, the media in it as well. Um, so you don't have long wait times. Uh, uh, for guests whenever you have to whenever you run out of uh, paper now in terms of a uh, uh, print advertised print speed we got seven seconds with the ip60 and um, 11 seconds with the cs2 and 8.3 seconds with the the ds620 now keep in mind that usually these print speeds that are uh, uh, advertised they sound impressive but keep in mind that um, usually it's on a high speed setting and that you'll find in your printing preferences, uh, depending on uh, you know whether you use Mac or Windows. Um, so keep in mind that if you switch it to high quality, usually the print time is a little bit longer. What I've noticed with the DS620, it's about 14 seconds or so um, at high quality setting. Um, with the uh, Sinfonia CS2, uh, it runs a little, little bit longer as well, roughly about 13, 14 seconds as well. So very similar to the DS620. Now with the um, IP60, it's closer to 20 seconds and that's manually timing it and seeing how long it would take uh, uh, to print. Um, in terms of print resolution though, uh, the winner is uh, in terms of uh, advertised resolution is the IP60 at 1200 by 4800 and we have 300 by 300 DPI for uh, these two uh, die subs here. Um, now in terms of actual print quality, uh, to, be, to be honest, I'm more impressed with the DS620. It's not bad on the IP60, um, but when you're printing out on smaller prints like 4x6 or 5x7, um, that print res resolution doesn't make uh, too much of a difference. Uh, it's more what the overall output is of the printer. Now, in terms of cost per print, we got 12 cents per print, 12 cents per print, and roughly about 14 cents per print here. That, that cost, uh, of course, varies depending on who, who you're buying your supplies from um, and whether it has to come from a, a different country. So being in Canada, we get a lot of our uh, supplies uh, uh, from the US. Uh, so with the exchange rate and all that, that all factors into play. Uh, but overall, all three really great uh, in terms of cost per print. I uh, really can't go wrong with any of them here. Let's talk a little bit about print size capability now. Uh, all three do two by six and four by six inch prints. Um, now it's, there's a lot of variance uh, beyond that. 
um, depending on which printer you're looking at. So I'm gonna have to read off of a list because my memory's not as good as it once was. So let's see, we got the DS620 here that can do, uh, also do four by four, three and a half by five, five by five, five by seven, six by six, six by eight and more. Um, and for some of them, obviously you would have to change uh, the type of media uh, and the media that's available for uh, the DS620. For the CS2, um, also the two by six, four by six, but you also have five by five, five by seven, six by eight, and six by six, if you're looking to do a large square print, uh, which is cool for Instagram type uh, activations. And with the Impressa IP, IP60, uh, you can do two by six, four by six, six by eight, six by six, six by 12, six by 18, six by 24, and that's without changing the media at all. So it's the same rule that you use uh, to print all those sizes. Um, so while you can't do a, a five by seven um, print, which is uh, a standard upgrade uh, for, uh, uh, for studios that do uh, events, uh, as well as photo booth uh, activations. Uh, so that's, that's unfortunate there. However, it's cool that you can do all those different print sizes without changing the media. And then when we look at uh, different types of media that you can use uh, with the printers, um, again, I love my DS620 because you can do uh, regular glossy, uh, metallic, and uh, silver pearl paper as well. Uh, the metallic looks really cool. Uh, for the CS2, uh, it is only one type of media that's available uh, that I've seen uh, anyway, uh, which is a glossy, uh, a glossy paper. And then the winner in this category would be the IP60 because you can get glossy, matte, luster, magnetic, postcard, uh, repositionable uh, adhesive paper. Uh, there are just so many options uh, for it. Um, so if you're looking for a printer that can do uh, unique type prints, uh, perhaps you have a, a clients that uh, look for uh, something that you know you, you don't see at all the parties, uh, then this might be the one to go for. And how about the type of finish that you can get without changing the media? With the DS620, you can do glossy, luster, matte, and um, a fine matte and the, the quality looks great. Uh, with the CS2, um, there is the matte option uh, when, when you look at it in the, the printer preferences. Uh, however, for some reason when I activate it, I could not get it to print matte. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna say it's glossy and I'm gonna look into it further uh, with regards to the matte finish and probably update it in the description below. And with the IP60, it is only one type of finish. Uh, it, it really depends on which, what type of uh, paper media that you have in there and how many prints per roll can each one hold. With the die subs, it's a, it's a set number. You have to change the ink uh, as well as the um, paper at the same time. Um, and it's a, it, what's nice is that it's a set number. You know exactly how many uh, uh, prints are left. Um, with the CS2, there's actually a status monitor that uh, will give you a little window at the bottom right corner of your screen and tells you how many uh, prints are remaining. Um, with the DS620, you can go into the printer preferences to see how many prints are remaining. Uh, in terms of total uh, prints that each roll can do, 400, 300, and approximately 500. The reason why it's approximate on um, the IP60 is because, remember, it's a thermal inkjet. So it actually uses an ink cartridge that you're going to see right here. Uh, so depending on how dark your prints are throughout the event, um, that could use more ink if, it's a, uh, if you're doing more darker prints, uh, which means the ink will not last as long. What's cool about the thermal inkjet uh, printers is that you don't necessarily have to change the ink uh, at the same time you change the paper and vice versa. So your ink might have run out, but you still have a lot of paper left. So you don't have to toss out the, the remainder of the roll. Uh, instead, you can just switch up the ink cartridge and it'll still continue printing until you run out paper. Um, so, you know, that's uh, definitely a benefit there. Less waste as well, of course. When we look at the size uh, and weight, I'm not gonna go into the exact uh, inches, you know, for each uh, printer, but in terms of weight, uh, 26 pounds, 22 pounds, and a very, very light uh, eight pounds. And that's with media uh, loaded in already. Um, I'm not kidding, I literally could uh, balance this on 
three fingers and you know <laughs> i'm sure even my five-year-old can pick this up and carry it for me with no problems so although the ds620 uh, does weigh the most out of the three i still feel like uh it is it produces the best quality uh, out of the three and um, still my favorite yeah no bias there right and um you know at 22 pounds the cs2 is not uh crazy heavy i remember the first photo booth that we built uh what 12 years ago 13 years ago now uh the first printer we got weighed about 60 pounds so 22 pounds is actually really awesome so what does that all mean why should you really care about the size well i mean think of the gear that you would have to uh, bring into uh, the event you know it's nice to have it's a uh, smaller but of course you still want excellent quality out of it um, besides it just being transportable um, but if i was to push all three together closer you can sort of see a size difference these two the ds620 and the cs2 are quite similar and when we look at the ip60 what you get what you gain in terms of less weight uh, you get a little bit more uh, in terms of its size so this is a little bit bulkier but it fits into you know all three will fit into uh, a standard uh, printer case or uh, printer transport case so you know if you don't mind uh, it being a couple inches taller then the ip60 uh, uh, is not a bad way to go now taking a quick look at paper quality Probably something that um, you don't really get to get to see when you're researching these printers uh, uh, online and on uh, different websites. It's actually looking at the um, paper comparisons. Now, when we're printing from the DS620 uh, or the CS2 for that matter, the feel of the print is actually quite nice. Um, the nice thing about the CS2 is that there's no branding printed on the back of the print. Um, so it just gives it that little uh, added touch. Uh, same with the IP60 as well. There's no branding printed on the back. Um, it, it does feel a little bit thinner though on the IP60. If I was to kind of just show you in terms of how this one is obviously thinner when you hold it side by side uh, compared to the DS620 and then this is the DS, oh, sorry, the CS2 print on in my left hand right here. You know, just a little bit thinner, not a huge deal. Um, doesn't seem like a huge deal when you look at it on screen. Uh, in terms of feel, uh, there is a difference though. And finally, let's talk a little bit about pricing for the IP60. It's currently selling for six nineteen ninety nine US dollars, uh, CS2 five ninety nine US dollars, and for the DNP DS six twenty A seven fifty nine ninety nine US dollars. Uh, so roughly in the same range in terms of pricing. Uh, yes, the DS620 um, is a little bit higher, uh, but again, it's it's one of my favorite printers. And after doing uh, multiple prints, for, uh, including color prints and black and white and trying different media and um, checking uh, all three out at conferences, uh, I can definitely say it's still my favorite. I actually can't wait to check out the uh, uh, DNP QW410 printer, which is a new small lightweight printer. Um, I did have a quick look at it at uh, at WPPI this year, uh, about a month ago, and uh, I was quite impressed with it actually. Uh, out of in comparison with these three, it holds way less prints, uh, but the paper change is relatively quick, um, and for its little size and weight and low power uh, uh, consumption, it's actually a cool one to check out. So maybe I'll get a chance to review it uh, for my next uh, printer video. Uh, but for now. That, com that concludes uh, this one. Um, I hope it's helpful to you. Uh, and I know, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to uh, take a look at all those numbers and different uh, specs online. Um, I wish uh, there was a, a comparison video like this uh, for me back when I started out uh, years ago. Uh, but again, hopefully this helps you out. Feel free to check out our website, togger.ca or follow us at togger.ca for more information in the future. Take care, stay safe and healthy.